for $3,000 and only two weeks of prep. I spent three weeks going all around Japan. I have to take this call. She's just started talking to me in Japanese. I'm really pissed at myself. No chance for conversation, no debate. I still find it really cool that I can sleep in a capsule and not feel claustrophobic or nervous. In fact, I feel very rested. And there's no rush, because I've already gone from Fukuoka to Karatsu, so I'll get to the parade eventually. I think today I'll just kind of sleep in a bit, mess around on my phone, go get some more of that toast and tea, and probably go shopping. I haven't done any of that yet, and my buddy really wants me to find some CDs for him because he's a huge Miku fan. This seems like a good opportunity. As I travel through Japan, I am exclusively a pedestrian or a passenger, but there are so many people I see riding bikes everywhere. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell if there are more bikes or cars in Japan. And interestingly, none of them seem locked and nobody seems worried. I used to bike commute through Chicago for years. If I could have, I would have put cinder blocks all over it to not get it stolen. So I'm kind of getting a little anxious that something's gonna happen, but I'm even seeing entire bike garages hidden under roadways for all of these commuters. And still, even there, no locks. I wouldn't mind living in a place where I don't have to lock up my bike. As I'm wrapping up my morning routine, I've got a Skype message and it looks like my mom and Nana are hanging out. They wanna do a call. But honestly, I'm pretty reticent to take it. See, it was really important to me during the planning and the actual traveling here to stay pretty isolated. I didn't want tethers back to what I knew. I'm in a country where I can't read, I can't speak. I might not even like the same taste. It could be hard to find something to eat. If I really connect with something that's comfort, I'm afraid it takes away from the in the moment experience. But my Nana, she used to live here. My mom is worried that I'm still alive. I have to take this call and I'm really glad that I do. Sitting down on the train, I've already done this two hours, so I know it's long. I've taken a lot of photos. I think I'm just gonna relax and listen to some music today. Without headphones? Without an iPod? Did I really leave it at the hostel? Are you kidding me, Anthony? My relaxing pity party of not having my iPod is interrupted by a woman coming over trying to talk to me. Of course in Japanese, but, but I'm monolinguistic. I have to rely on my phrasebook and Google Translate, so I'm really not sure how this is gonna go, but I think it's a great opportunity to see if I can break that language barrier and actually get to know somebody else. And to be clear, she didn't tap me on the shoulder or something and go, huh? She's just started talking to me in Japanese. So I'm fumbling to get my phrase book out and like, ah, where's the greeting section? And then she keeps talking and she's smiling. She's really friendly and nice, but I am not ready for this. I'm really caught off guard. You know, in the moment, this was so challenging that it got to the point where I just, I wanted it to be over with. Put my head back on the window, live without my music. Why are you bothering? I'm already frustrated enough. But looking back at it now, I'm so glad that this happened. It really challenged me again as a traveler. Because frankly, there's an arrogance to go to a country and not speak its language. I mean, I knew like four words maybe, and honestly, it's sumi masen nine times out of 10. But it did make me more comfortable later in the trip talking to people who either had very poor or middling English. The rest of this train ride is Photo City. In fact, I get some of my favorites of the entire trip. A gal riding her bike and waiting at the crossing for us to get by. A train conductor and his assistant silhouetted against the orange sky. And an exceptionally busy train station because it turns out it's a hot air balloon festival. How many festivals are happening right now? Descending from the platform in Karatsu, I can tell it's festival time. There's a total redoing of all the decorations in the train station. Hot air balloons hanging from the ceiling and tons of people walking the direction away from the city. Why? The, the parade is about to happen, right? Well, oh no, 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 no. The pamphlet says the parade was an hour ago. Did I really prioritize shopping over coming out to this parade? I'm very disappointed in my, no, 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 I'm even disappointed. I'm really pissed at myself. I miss the, the main attraction of the event. This is the point. The festival is around floats, floats going to parade. 
I want to find a bar. I want to find a bar with alcohol and food and just be angry. Now maybe this map tells me where there is one nearby. Nearby the floats. Does this tell me where the floats are at? I may be pissed, but this map is going to salvage my evening. It shows where all the floats are scattered throughout the city. It's literally a scavenger hunt, which means it doesn't really matter what time it is. Yeah, I'm going to just go. I'm going to wander around. Darkness doesn't matter. Food doesn't matter. I came here to see floats. I'm going to see floats. This whole activity of finding floats is so well designed. It's not like they're only a couple blocks from each other. No, some are on the far end of the city, some are on that end of the city, and I'm upwards of a 20 minute walk just to find one. And it's all dark. Where am I even gonna find this? And as I turn a corner, I see one of the floats. They have a lit tent pavilion specifically so that you can check it out in all its glory and not lose any of the detail at night. That's one float down, but there are many more to go, and I want to find as many as possible before I go back to the heart of the festival. That's going on for hours. It can wait. And as I move between the locations on the map, I can hear and feel how the festival is being celebrated by all the families in the neighborhood. Lots of windows are open, parties are happening inside, and you can hear the conversations. You can smell the food. I feel like this observer passing through portholes, right? You can see something happen and they're not acknowledging me. I don't exist to them. It's really pretty trippy and quiet and contemplative and almost voyeuristic in the experience. But everybody's having a great time and I'm, I'm feeling a lot better than I did about half an hour ago. This float I find is the biggest one yet. It's pushing 20 feet tall. So the tent around it is even larger with lots of cross beams. And this one has these I'd say about eight year old kids just hanging off like it's monkey bars or a jungle gym and they're super stoked. Their parent is sitting off to the side just like, yeah, it's my job to watch this float. And the kids are like, it's my job to watch this float. And I come up with a camera and they're trying to get in the photos and they're just friendly as heck. I can't be here late enough to find them out. I'll miss the train home. So maybe one or two more and I'll work back toward the shrine and we'll call it a night. But what happens actually is I get a message from my friend. His twins were born tonight and they're half Japanese. It's truly serendipity that I would be in a town with a festival and a shrine on the night that they're born. So I'm going to write them an Ama. It's those wooden plaques that you see hanging on the shrines with a little picture on the front. And I'll write them a prayer. I'll even pray at the shrine. The man in Akitsuki taught me how, so this would be a fantastic way to celebrate both their birth and hopefully give what wishes for a solid life. I've salvaged this day. I'm really happy. I almost got back on that train and when I missed the parade, so I'm happy with this. Now I just need some food, and I wouldn't mind more of that chicken on a stick from yesterday, or that crazy sugary crepe. Yeah, I'll grab it on the way down the street. Or I would if this festival wasn't at peak population right now and the lines are way too long. So, all right, another Family Mart dinner in Fukuoka will be fine. We'll get on the train, get a little rest. I mean, tomorrow I'm going to the Kansai region and landing in Osaka. Throughout this trip, I spent a lot of time on trains and eventually they stopped being all that notable. Get on, ride, rest, maybe do a little planning. But on the way back to Fukuoka, I had to make a transfer, which is pretty uncommon. And in fact, I had to wait for my next train. Also, very uncommon for me. So I went downstairs into what was just a big waiting lounge and thought, I'd kill the 30 minutes and sit here. And as I leaned back, I stopped understanding the people around me. Then I noticed the TV and I couldn't understand it either. And then the PA came on and of course I couldn't understand that either. And my whole world just kind of, it felt like cotton was shoved in my ears and I kind of had to stop myself. I was so alone and had no point of reference. It was surreal, it was spiritual, it was terrifying and lonely for about five seconds. And then it was this very, very peaceful calm. No one noticed me, no one was worried about me, and I didn't need to know the language, speak it or hear it. It went from being really loud and a lot of noise to being real quiet very hard to put into words. And then I was back on the train. 
Off the train and back in Fukuoka, I'm still hungry, so eh, it's a little earlier than it was last night. Let's give the yatai another try. It was really long lines before, maybe it won't be today. In fact, there aren't any lines at all, so I'm just gonna push my head in here and, uh, oh, okay, no. All right, no space for me, that's fine. Wave me off. No chance for conversation, no debate. Okay, fine. Family Mart again for dinner. This is only the, yeah, 13th time I've had a meal at Family Mart. Bento boxes in Japan are probably different from what you're used to. They're more take and eat as opposed to a menu item in a restaurant, which means that it's a pretty quick transaction even if they're not pre-assembled. So it's possible that you get it from a small enough stand. They don't have a microwave like at Family Mart where they'd warm it up for you. So it's possible you get a steak and barbecue bento that's definitely meant to be warm, what with the rare meat and everything, cold. An odd way to eat steak. With my now habitual Family Mart dinner bento down, it's back to the hostel to see if, yep. That's right, I managed to not lose my iPod. I just left it on the end of my bed. I don't know how I missed that, but at least I've got music for the rest of the trip. And I don't even have to worry about booking a place tomorrow because past Anthony took care of present Anthony. I'm pretty stoked about that. So it's easy to just lay down and go to bed because tomorrow I'm traveling to the Kansai region to check out much cleaner deer than Miyajima. Hopefully the biggest castle I've seen yet in Osaka and the Golden Temple, Kinkakuji in Kyoto. This will be the longest time I've stayed anywhere yet. I wonder what else I'll get up to. Hey everybody, we're a week into this trip and I'm super glad you're with us, but there's still two more weeks to go. So if you don't wanna miss them, like the video, subscribe, and head down to the comments section. We can talk some more details about where we've been and I'll even give you a preview of where we're going. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time.